1820, Danish physicist and chemist Hans Christian Ørsted was setting up materials for a lecture. His materials included an early kind of battery called a voltaic pile constructed of copper and zinc plates in a dilute acid solution and a wire held in place here by a set of clamps. Ersted and other scientists of his day knew that when a wire was connected between the positive and negative terminals of a battery, electricity would flow through that wire. Electrons actually move from negative to positive. However, the convention is to think of electrical currents as moving from positive to negative. So that's how we'll show it here, using red particles. Back then, scientists still had much to learn about electricity. Preparing for his lecture, Ersted made a very important discovery about the phenomenon, quite accidentally. Among Ørsted's scientific paraphernalia was a compass, its needle, of course, pointed north in alignment with the Earth's magnetic field. Ørsted happened to place the compass near his battery and was startled to notice that the compass needle moved. As Ørsted deduced, this happened because the wire produced a magnetic field around it when it carried a current. If there is no current in the wire, the needle reverts to the alignment with the Earth's magnetic field. As it turns out, an electric current, made up of moving charged particles, produces a magnetic field that circles around the moving current, as shown by these blue lines. If you reverse the direction of the current, then the magnetic field around the wire moves in the opposite direction, and the needle on the compass flips to reflect the change in field. If you move the compass to a new spot near the wire, the needle will realign with the direction of the magnetic field in that particular location. Ørsted's accidental discovery was solid evidence that electricity and magnetism were related phenomena. The announcement of his findings incited a tremendous outbreak of research in the nascent field of electromagnetics in the early 1820s. This is a qualitative recreation of an experiment Michael Faraday did in the early 19th century. He had two coils of wire. This coil here is connected up to a battery, and so it produces a magnetic field. This coil here is connected to a galvanometer. What Faraday expected to see, we think, was that when he hooked this up to produce a current in the first coil, he would produce a current in the second coil. But actually, you can look and you can see there's no current. However, what Faraday then discovered was that when he connected or disconnected the circuit, there would be a current. So here we've got a current in that first coil, produces a magnetic field. When I cut the current in the first coil, you'll notice that the galvanometer deflects just for a fraction of a second. And when I connect it back up, I get a deflection in the opposite direction.
Magnetohydrodynamics is the study of the magnetic properties of electrically conducting fluids. Examples of such magnetofluids include plasmas, liquid metals, and salt water or electrolytes. The word magnetohydrodynamics is derived from magneto meaning magnetic field, hydro meaning water, and dynamics meaning movement. The field of MHD was initiated by Hannes Alfven, for which he received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1970. The fundamental concept behind MHD is that magnetic fields can induce currents in a moving conductive fluid which in turn polarizes the fluid and reciprocally changes the magnetic field itself. The set of equations that describe MHD are a combination of the Navier-Stokes equations of fluid dynamics and Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism. These differential equations must be solved simultaneously, either analytically or numerically. The first recorded use of the word magnetohydrodynamics is by Hannes Alfven in 1942. The ebbing salty water flowing past London's Waterloo Bridge interacts with the Earth's magnetic field to produce a potential difference between the two riverbanks. Michael Faraday tried this experiment in 1832, but the current was too small to measure with the equipment at the time, and the riverbed contributed to short-circuit the signal. However, by a similar process the voltage induced by the tide in the English Channel was measured in 1851. The simplest form of MHD, ideal MHD, assumes that the fluid has so little resistivity that it can be treated as a perfect conductor. This is the limit of infinite magnetic Reynolds number. In ideal MHD, Lenz's law dictates that the fluid is in a sense tied to the magnetic field lines. To explain, in ideal MHD a small rope-like volume of fluid surrounding a field line will continue to lie along a magnetic field line, even as it is twisted and distorted by fluid flows in the system. This is sometimes referred to as the magnetic field lines being frozen in the fluid. The connection between magnetic field lines and fluid in ideal MHD fixes the topology of the magnetic field. In the fluid, for example, if a set of magnetic field lines are tied into a knot, then they will remain so as long as the fluid slash plasma has negligible resistivity. This difficulty in reconnecting magnetic field lines makes it possible to store energy by moving the fluid or the source of the magnetic field. The energy can then become available if the conditions for ideal MHD break down, allowing magnetic reconnection that releases the stored energy from the magnetic field. Thank you for watching. For more educational videos, please subscribe to WizScience on YouTube or visit wizscience.com.